Hello everyone, in this lesson we're going to look at the different kinds of intermolecular forces. So the way it works is the following. You first need to determine whether your covalent molecule is balanced or not, whether it's polar or non-polar. So what we do is we take one of them and we're going to have to zoom in with a Lewis diagram. So if you had H and you had Cl, now I'm not going to bring up the periodic table because by now you guys are probably familiar that hydrogen has one electron whereas chlorine has seven. And so when these two bond together the Lewis diagram would look like this. Now to determine whether it is balanced or not, remember we need to look at the electronegativities and for that we will need our periodic table because you do not need to memorize those numbers off by heart. And so if we look at hydrogen we can see that that number is 2.1 and Cl is 3. And so if you say, oh well, no we don't even have to know the difference, but just out of interest the difference is 0 0.9 and so we can confidently say that this is a covalent bond because it's less than 2.1. Cl, however, is higher than hydrogen, which means that Cl wants electrons more than hydrogen. And so the electrons are going to be closer to the Cl than the hydrogen. And so if we have to have a look at this bond over here, those electrons are actually going to be closer to the Cl. So it would look more like this. And now remember what that does is because all of those electrons are shifting closer to the Cl, it, it causes the Cl to become slightly negative, whereas the hydrogen now becomes slightly positive. Remember that be mo those electrons are still being shared, so the hydrogen does hold on to them a little bit, and that's why it becomes slightly positive and the Cl becomes slightly negative. If we were busy with ionic bonding, you would simply put a plus and a minus because then the electrons move completely from the one to the other. But with covalent bonding, they share. And so we've got a more positive part of our molecule and we've got a more negative part. So we've got a positive and a negative pole. And so this is a polar molecule. So now that word polar is going to help us determine the name of this force. So what we have here is we have a polar molecule and a, another polar molecule. Now another name for polar is a dipole. Now this is actually quite easy. Pole means that it's got two different poles, like, or it's got poles, so like a positive and a negative, and the di means two. So it's a dipole, it's got two poles, a positive and a negative. So scientists were very original when they came up with the name of this type of force. They said, oh, well, this is a dipole, and this molecule here is also a dipole, and so we will be very original, and we will call that a dipole-dipole force. So that is the first type of intermolecular force that we will discover, is a dipole-dipole force. It's between two molecules which are both polar. Okay, so here on the side I've just labeled, well I've said that the types of intermolecular, oh I spelled that wrong, forces will be dipole-dipole, that takes place between two polar molecules. Okay, so now we're going to move on to something different. Now we're going to look at the type of intermolecular force between hydrogen molecules. So to, to do that we need to zoom into the Lewis diagram first. So I've got two hydrogen atoms, each with their one little electron, remember from the periodic table they are in group one. And so when they bond together, it's a very easy connection. They just have that over there. Now we need to look at whether that's going to be balanced or not. So we look at the electronegativities. Um, the electronegativity of hydrogen is 2.1, and this one's also 2.1. So if you look at the difference, that's going to be zero. Now let's think about this carefully. You've got one hydrogen atom over here and another hydrogen atom over here, and it's got these two electrons in between. Now they both want, well they both have the same electronegativity and so they both want the electrons by the same power. So they are going to share those electrons absolutely perfectly. Those electrons are going to be right in the middle. They're not going to be more to the left or more to the right. They are going to be shared right in the middle. We call this pure covalent. Covalent 
You can think of covalent as it can mean sharing. That is what covalent is, it's when they share. Now if it's pure covalent, it means that they are sharing them perfectly. Whereas when we looked at HCl, Cl was a little bit more greedy and the electrons were closer to the Cl. That's not perfect sharing. It's still sharing, but it's not the best. Whereas here we've got pure covalent. And so because those electrons are right in the middle, you're not going to get a more negative and a more positive part. And so this molecule is not going to have a positive and a negative pole. So this is not a polar molecule. It's non-polar. It doesn't have that north and the south. It's just completely balanced. It's non-polar. And so we've got a new type of intermolecular force that takes place between a nonpolar and another nonpolar. We call these London forces. London forces. And by the way, they don't have to be the same. It, it can be hydrogen and hydrogen, and then it could be, for example, Br and Br, as long as the two molecules are nonpolar. The third type is going to be when we have a nonpolar. Remember, we said that this one is nonpolar. And then in the previous, when we look, when we started this lesson, we said that HCl is polar. So the type of bond, or not bond, force that exists between those two is called the following. Okay, so we know that when it's polar, we call that a dipole. And then for this nonpolar one, we're going to call it an induced dipole. So that is the name of the force between a polar and a nonpolar. You call it a dipole, induced dipole. Now I'm going to quickly explain where we get this word induced from. So if we look at hydrogen, the electrons are completely balanced. And then if we look at HCl, the electrons are closer to the Cl. And this part we said is slightly negative and this part is slightly positive. Now imagine that this molecule is floating along and it gets close to this hydrogen over here. Well then the scenario is going to look like this. And so what happens is that this entire region is going to be more positive because of this positive charge over here. And so what do you think these electrons are going to do? Well they are negative and opposites attract so they're going to move over to the right a little bit to the area that is more positive. And so what happens is that inside this molecule, the electrons have now shifted over to the right hand side, so this area becomes more negative, leaving this side as more positive. Now look at what has happened. We've taken a molecule, which is this one, that was originally nonpolar, meaning it didn't have a positive and a negative, and now all of a sudden we've turned it into a positive and a negative. So we've caused that to happen. And that's where the word induce means. Induce means to cause something to happen. So we took a dipole molecule, which is this one, and we caused something else to become a dipole. That's where the word induced comes from. And so there I've added force number three, which is a dipole, induced dipole, which is between a polar, which was this one, and a nonpolar, which is that one. The next type of force we're going to look at is between a nonpolar molecule and this over here. Now, I wonder if there are any of you who can remember what you call something that has a charge like this. Well, well done if you realized or remembered that that is an iron. Okay, so we get a type of force between a nonpolar and an iron. So let's see what happens. Let's say we've got hydrogen over here, busy floating along, doing its own thing, and all of a sudden, this positive ion comes floating along. As that Na ion gets close over here, or close to here, then this whole region is going to be viewed as positive. And so once again, you might be able to predict what's going to happen. These electrons are going to move more towards this hydrogen on the right because it's those electrons are negative and opposites attract and so for a short moment in time your molecule will look like this 
the electrons will be more towards the hydrogen on the right and so that hydrogen will become slightly negative leaving the other hydrogen slightly positive now all of a sudden this molecule is polar because remember polar means it's got a negative and a positive side so what has happened we took an iron and we caused something to become polar when you cause something to become polar you induce so that's going to be called an induced dipole and what did we start off with we started with an iron and so the name of that force is an iron induced dipole force and then the last type of force is going to be between a polar molecule and an iron so let's see what would happen so we've got HCl which we already know is polar because the electrons are more around the Cl and so this Cl is already slightly negative and the hydrogen is slightly positive now if this Na plus comes floating along it's instantly going to be attracted to the Cl minus because opposites attract and so there we go that is the force over there and so let's see what we have well we have an iron and we have a polar molecule which is called a dipole so this is called an iron dipole force and so those are the different forces that we have there are five of them there is a special type of force called hydrogen bonding but I'm gonna explain that as a separate force in the next lesson that hydrogen bond is actually a special case of number one dipole dipole I'll see you in the next lesson